Like sleep eight hours. Live. We're on air. Hello, everybody. Please send us your questions and we will answer them as soon as possible. Welcome to New York. Welcome to the Orchard. Welcome to the live chat. There was an error loading your app. Uh oh. Something went wrong. There we are. Good. There you are. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so where do we see the questions? Yeah, I don't see any yet. Or maybe we should just anything. answer the ones which we have on the table? Yeah, you can start. Yeah. You want to do the first one? No, you can start. <laughs> you're the you're the lady. I have to start. Okay. If you have to choose a song that you've never played live, which one would you like to choose? And I'm assuming it's a non epica song? I would assume so, yeah. Confide in Me by Kylie Minogue. Wow. That's weird, because I sang that, like, just uh, for fun in the bathroom. And <laughs> I think that's, that song suits my voice. I don't know a lot of Kylie Minogue, but that song, me neither. along the one she did with uh, Nick Cave, that one too. Go me the one. Oh, that one. Yeah, confide me is a different one. That one. I oh, see. okay. I thought already. All right. Cool. Next one. Um, okay. I had a question. At which age uh, I got my first guitar? Um, that was when I was, I think, around eight. I I had to go to classical or yeah, classical guitar. That was for uh, at the music academy in Belgium. So I was eight, and I, I didn't really practice a lot in the beginning, but mm -hmm. that was when I got it. You can't hear it now anymore that you didn't practice in the beginning. Well, <laughs> I don't know. OK, somebody asked me, will we ever see you on the road with Camelot again? And uh, I hope so. Everybody can bring all the, the Camelotica kids <laughs> and the Camelot kids and the uh, We'll do a Camelot festival and a junior festival. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I don't know. But it would be nice. OK. My first metal album I bought was, uh, I think it was Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion 2. And um, I'm not sure which year that was. But that must have been something like 12 or 13. So I heard a lot of music before that, mainly from my parents. But that was the first one I actually bought with my own money. And the second one was a Effigy of the Forgotten from uh, Suffocation, which was uh, kind of a, <laughs> a big step forward. Uh, oh, questions are coming in? Yeah. Uh, Egypt, anybody? <laughs> Hello from Venezuela. Hello. Hi, Simon Isa. Hi, Ruert. Also, okay, Ruth. <laughs> okay, these are the live questions coming in right now, but people are first letting us know where they live. So we have people from Peru, we have from Egypt. Uh, so instead of saying hi, just say hi and a question. Yeah, you know? ask us your questions. We're here yeah. for that. So oh. interview us. Did you guys enjoy it yesterday? Oh, that goes so fast. There's too many questions. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday we played the acoustic songs, and that was yeah. fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fun to hang out with uh, the fans. We played uh, four songs, and uh, yeah, it was cool. We did like a ton of interviews before, uh, video interviews, and uh, yeah, hung out with the fans. And after that, we had dinner like 11 in the evening, <laughs> super yeah. hungry. But we're having a good time in New York. We're taking care of. Uh, really well by the Nikhilvas staff. Thank you. Thanks, Nikhilvas. <laughs> oh, I think it's delayed, right? A little bit. A little bit, yeah, okay. Speak my name, Simone. Speak my name. <laughs> I had a question. Oh, they do listen, actually. Someone says hi. I had a question. <laughs> yeah, okay, Sharik. <laughs> Very funny. Simone, who is your favorite? Female lead singer, uh, Anneke van Giersbergen. 
Jesus, sweetie. I had another question. I'll just look here. Uh, are there any changes in the tuning of the instruments for this album? Yeah, there's one song, but it's an additional track on the Digipack version, and I think also in the yearbook. What's the name? In All Conscience? Yeah. Which is yeah. um, tuned down, like we, we are tuned. I play a seven string, so it's in B, and I tune the B to A, so it's a drop A tune. Which is uh, makes it really heavy. I think Meshuga is always also playing a. I'm not sure, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, there is a different tuning. I got a sneeze. <laughs> okay, Isaac. How many different languages do you speak? Oh well, I'm speaking English right now, and I speak uh, Flemish. That's my mother tongue which is similar to Dutch, so if I do my best uh, and if I get really drunk, I might be able to speak Dutch um, properly. properly. Could you the, please say something in Flemish? In Flemish? Fuck you. <laughs> oh, that's West Flemish. <laughs> that's West, okay. Yeah. Mulle hom. Mulle hom. And I used to live in German, so I speak a little German. Uh, and I speak a little French because I live close to France, but not that well. And that's about it. How many languages do you speak? Are you tired? No. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Already? Uh, I love German, Dutch, English, French. I understand Spanish majority, but I can't really speak. No hablo español. Hablo, hablo, hab no, I'm a woman, so it's habla, right? Or hable, hablo. Uh, no, but the H is silent. So. Hab habla, no, habla. No, not habla. Yeah, we have somebody who speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. But I would love to actually learn to speak more Spanish because we have so many fans, Spanish speaking fans. Portuguese as well. Obrigada, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Obrigada, Portuguese. Um, yeah. New questions. Okay, let's check here. Well, that, the top one. Describe in four words and chain your top. Try it. Absolutely amazing, mind blowing. Yeah, mind blowing is like two words. Song. <laughs> All right. Isaac, mom most lovely. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Creating some form. Ay, 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 caramba. Ay, ay, ay. So, mom, do you play any instrument? Uh, I just played some guitar earlier. Isaac was trying to teach me. It's yeah, horrible. it's horrible. You can play two chords. Yeah. Are you going to do another concert in Paris in 2014? That's this year, right? 2015. Yeah, yeah next year we're going to be in Paris again. So. In the uh, beginning of 2015, we'll play uh, a really big show in Paris. Yes. Simone, what has been your inspiration for this album? Um, as far as lyrics go. As far as lyrics go, quantum enigma, the whole concept behind it, the, the human mind, the circle of life, and uh, the quest of reality. So this record is extremely philosophical, spiritual, scientific. And I can talk for many hours about this, but we have more questions coming up. Isaac, what is your favorite song in the quantum mm. It's a tough one mm. because I like all of them. Uh, if I have to pick one, let's say, what is uh, the, what's the name of that? Song? Is that now in Genitopia? No. Can you sing the melody? No. <laughs> Chemical insomnia, then. Yeah. I'll try a second song. Chem chemical insomnia. That's my favorite. And yours? Um, well, I just go. I'm going to say something weird, but I really love the intro as well. <laughs> That's a song. I love the intro, and uh, I like natural corruption a lot. It's really cool. What do you think of the new Within Temptation album, Hydra? I've heard the song with. Sorry, yeah. And uh, I, I like the song "And We Run." I understand that, but I don't know the whole record. But, uh, 
Sharon is really pretty. Who develops the concepts for the album? It's, mo it's mainly Mark who comes up with the album title and the idea behind it. And we were discussing this already back in when we were in Australia. We were sitting together and a little bit brainstorming about the future, about the new record. And uh, yeah, Mark then introduced the quantum enigma. And he is already very much interested in quantum physics. He wrote already about it on King of Heaven and the Science Universe record. And we uh, we continued now. And we uh, let's say pass on the torch to quantum enigma. Yeah, maybe another question here. What's my favorite band of all time? Uh, my favorite band? Damn. Uh, Pantera. Badass. I love Pantera. Too bad uh, that I died. Yeah. What's your favorite band? Insomnia, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really like it. So I'm, I'm really happy that they're going to support us in uh, 013. 30th, 30th of April, we will play... Uh, we have a little spam. Yeah, of course, <laughs> I'm always spamming. <laughs> spam metal. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Insomnia would be my answer. Say hi to uh, Brazil. Hi, Brazil. <laughs> okay, that one we had already described in full world. Which are the diff what's the difference between re Requiem for the Indifferent and the Quantum Enigma sound and lyrics? Yeah. And Tell songs. me, and what's songs. the difference? Yeah, the, this time we uh, work with a different producer and a different mixer. So I would say the sound already, it's, it's heavier than ever before. Um, the songs are compact, but we have a couple of long ones as well. And um, yeah, the lyrics this time, indeed, very philosophical, spiritual, and uh, just really amazing. <laughs> so amazing. Do you yeah. have any alter ego? No, I'm, I'm myself. I mean myself and I, you? <laughs> no, you're all on stage, you're very much the same as you are now. Yeah, I like to goof around. Yeah, we're both very goofy. There were some cool questions. On there, yeah. Uh, oh, if I have more guitar solos on the new album, I don't know if it's more than usual. I don't think so. It's like um, they, maybe five or something. better than ever before. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I uh, I have some solos again. Um, I think maybe five songs of solos, something like that. Yeah, but that's, that's a good amount. It's really yeah, good. only if the song asks for it. And mm -hmm. solo, because I always uh, people always ask me, or any band I have been playing in so far, everyone always asks me to play solos, but I never come up with that idea myself. <laughs> oh, we have somebody that studied quantum physics, so uh, oh. I'll give you Mark's email, and you guys can totally uh, nerd out on quantum physics. <laughs> <laughs> His email uh, is. Uh, Mark at Epica. <laughs> Mark, Mark from Epica at. Uh, his phone number is 003167. <laughs> Three, <two>. no. <laughs> Simone, what's your favorite song from Epica to sing live? I really like Storm of Sorrow, but I'm really looking forward to the new songs as well. So, uh, yeah. Isaac, I love I love you. Marry me. Wow, you're single. Okay, Marcella, I will marry you. Now you're engaged via Google Plus. I'll send you the ring. <laughs> that was not a question. That was an order. It was a command. <laughs> no, no question. Mark. What's the most crazy story from tour? Okay. There are many, and we're going to write a book about it. No, please don't. My, my, my new wife wouldn't like it. Okay. <laughs> Your future wife. Um, Simone, what was the biggest challenge you faced in this new album? 
I was in a new phase of my life. Uh, I recorded the book two months after I gave birth, so I was so tired like hell, uh, didn't sleep, and uh, breastfeeding is physically extremely exhausting, and singing is can also be physically demanding. So for me, it was the most challenging uh, recording ever. But um, I worked with CEOs, he recorded with me, and the funny thing is that for this record, uh, it took me the shortest to record ever, even though we had more songs than ever before. So it was like, yeah, me and Yos had some uh, chemistry going on, worked super fast, and uh, yeah, very efficient. And I looked after Vincent. Isaac, uh, Umshaki, Isaac was saying Vincent. Uh, <laughs> that was funny. Very he liked to. He would. He liked it. How do you refresh this here? Coming from the school and see this. How was school? <laughs> Let me ask you, and you answer. Can someone ask if it's a weird transition between a death metal and epica? Uh, no, it was kind of easy, I guess. I was thrown into it like from the start. I think on the the day after I officially joined the band, I already started doing pre-production on Design the Universe, so it was pretty smooth. You're a very versatile guitarist anyway, and you like different styles of music, so yeah. it's not like you're only dust metal and that's it. So. That's true. Yeah. Simone, is your voice changing after having a baby? Yes. During pregnancy and after pregnancy, uh, it changed. Definitely. For the better, I would say. Essence of Silence or Unchain Utopia, which one reflects the upcoming album better? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's a weird, um, difficult to answer because we both have epic moments. Yeah. Well, I always say that, or I see it like that, that we don't make individual songs, but that we make an album. So it's the whole, you have to listen to the whole thing, in my opinion. So it's hard to say because we have hard songs and we have the ballad, for instance. Uh, okay, my favorite color would be yellow. Thank you, Nicholas, for your question. Hey, guys, in capitals, are you planning a Latin America tour? Mm -hmm. Of course we are, because it's great to play there. So, yeah, we'll be there uh, later this year. Isaac, why the new Gent 5 to the wrist? <laughs> I don't even know what gen is. No. I've heard of it, and I don't really know the genre. And I, I'm not really sure which. I've heard that before, that they say it's a gen kind of riffing, but I, I don't know which riff they mean. And um, I don't know. I just uh, guess came up with what I thought sounded good. And if that's gen, then I'm really sorry to... Uh, <laughs> to it is, uh, I don't know. Isaac, what new song do you want to play live? Uh, I, I don't know yet, because I haven't played them live yet. So we're going to start with the CD release, uh, end of the month, and play all of them live. So that's going to be challenging. And, um, and then, I guess, depending on how the people react, certain songs, that's going to be my favorite songs, I guess. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can have a song you think is really great, but then if you play it live, it turns out to be like maybe people don't dig it or it's just not the right atmosphere. And then sometimes a song which you thought, oh, this, this is pretty boring probably, then that ends mm -hmm. up being a fan favorite and people go crazy. Like, so I don't know yet. We will find out soon enough yeah. after the CD presentation on the 30th of April, 2013. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought of what Epica would sound like if all the members were replaced with cats? Yeah? Next question. Do you, do you like to read? If so, what book can you recommend that has been a big influence for you in your life and your way of thinking? Well, you read more than I do, so that would be probably 
Uh, that would be, uh, I think it's from Elliot Murphy, and it's the power of your subconscious mind, and that book kind of changed. It, it's a, there's a lot of God stuff and Bible-ish stuff which I kind of skipped, but if you go to the essence of the book, it's basically uh, um, about if you you know the power of your mind. So if you if you want something, just go for it and just think you maybe already have it or that you want to achieve this or that goal and if you really believe that and if you work for it then it's going to happen. So that's basically what, what it's about this book. I haven't read it in ages but I think the first time I read it I read it twice. Um, yeah, you should read it. I totally believe in the power of the subconscious mind and it's, a, it's also a topic within our lyrics. And, uh, uh, and for me, body and soul are connected, and you can strengthen each other, and you can weaken each other. So definitely keep a positive mindset. And uh, you're yeah, falling out of the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you have a positive uh, um, attitude, positive things will follow. So it's a uh, it's an exchange of positivity. So. Mm -hmm. We ever come to the Ukraine? We played there at a festival a couple of years ago. I remember that because um, the huge thunderstorm and the power was cut off. Yeah, it was a festival. Many, mm. I don't know how many years ago, Two, three years ago even already. But we would love to come back. We'd like to come on over the world. Like yeah. Visit all the countries. Mm. Um, sure. Can we expect a solo album <laughs> with stuff like Tommy Amano from you? Yeah, I would love to do that. I'm actually uh, writing uh, acoustic stuff. <laughs> Can you? Oh, people are getting. Uh, there's more people who want to marry me. <laughs> yeah, you're already uh, <laughs> Sofia Sanchez. <laughs> I'm sorry. I. Uh, what was the name of the one I knew? Marcela. Sorry. No, Marcella. <laughs> Have you ever considered working with Ethereum? I like Ethereum. I was uh, definitely when I got into metal. That was uh, a real um, inspiration. I, I like that they also combine the classical with the metal, with metal and the wires, and they have some amazing singers. So yeah, cool. Would be I would be up for a collaboration. Are you already planning a new record? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're in the middle of the promo storm for uh, the sorrow. No, for uh, the quantum enigma. And, uh, yeah, I wrote ten songs already. You have? Yeah, we have. <laughs> we have some extra songs which we didn't record for the quantum enigma. So uh, there are definitely still some songs oh, that's, waiting. That's a good question. The first one. Is there a reason so many of Epica's songs are written in B minor? Yeah, because I'm playing uh, uh, seventh string, which is the, the thickest string is the B. And we're evil metal, so we like minor uh, instead of uh, major. So that's the uh, reason. And I think uh, Kuna, keyboard player, he doesn't like that because it's uh, awkward on piano. It's harder to play. I think he would prefer... Uh, a guitar in C major, but um, yeah, so that's the reason. Good question. I have a funny question I'll answer now because I've had that question asked me a couple of times already. Why do I have a little chicken as my Twitter profile? Well, if you look closely at, uh, at my profile photo, you see that it's a chicken with the metal sign. And um, when I was in Orlando a couple years back at Universal Studios, there was this um, wall um, poster, and it was, I think, also an animation movie. I actually don't remember which movie it was, but there was this chicken doing this metal sound, and I thought that's cool because I am a metal chick. <laughs> Plus, you have Twitter where birds are tweeting, even though a chicken makes pop pop, but I mean, pop pop that come. So, uh, yeah, I am a metal chick, that's why. Look closely and you see it's metal. So that's why. And I think it's funny and 
I'm so fun. <laughs> so Simone, so I got you laughing, so. <laughs> Simone, say something in Spanish. Habla uh, español, por favor. Vamos a la playa. Te amo. Can you sing a little, please? Oh, which song? I got it. Oh, now, yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's Shall we play it. something? Yeah. Yeah, Live on YouTube. Yeah, yeah a guitar. Right? You have a guitar, so <laughs> which one shall we do? Whatever you want. A storm song. Okay. Jazzy verse? Yeah, jazz metal. Funky? Alright, ready? No, I'm not ready. <laughs> So now that we sung this, uh, Simone, are you a soprano or a mezzo soprano? I thought I was a mezzo soprano, but I actually have to check up what my range is. I think I moved up to soprano. Mm. Me too. Yep. I thought you were uh, alto. <laughs> You're alto. Alto? Uh, alternative. Alternative. Will you make a new DVD? Well, uh, retrospect was also a big, big challenge. Yeah. Uh, if you really think about it, retrospect has been being prepared for since the beginning of Africa. So it was like a 12 year <laughs> process of making retrospect. And uh, no, it was uh, definitely a huge project. And there goes so much work into. Uh, the show itself, and then the DVD afterwards, and uh, yeah, the guys had a lot of work with finalizing it. I was uh, I was put off, uh, luckily because I had the baby and I did not have much to do with it. But there was yeah, there's so much more work than you actually yeah, yeah. know. So it's definitely we have now the Quantum Enigma. That's our priority, and uh, we we make CDs, not DVDs. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're gonna. Continue with the city for a while and maybe in the future. Simone, are we going to tour Latin America? Yes, we are. This year, we're working on it. But we're probably going to do um, a couple of those tours because um, we are even flying a lot during those tours and uh, it can be very exhausting, you know, flying and sleeping long and then doing a show at the same day. So we have to split them up in order to do more countries, more shows, and just you know be uh, be cautious with our energy. Uh, yeah, we're, but we're excited to go uh, on tour again. We have first some festivals coming up, and after that, uh, Latin American tour, North American, and same for Europe. We will probably split it up into a three le legs. That's how you say tour legs. And, uh, in order to play more and to not make the tours too long, so we can all hang out with our girlfriend, husband, and babies. And my and, new, uh, my new. And and Isaac's new wife. I get I get to meet my new wife. <laughs> Simone, I would like to see you singing again with Mayan. Is there any possibility of this happening? Maybe for the third record, if there's one coming, a third record. I, I haven't sung on the second record, but on the first and. Um, yeah, I, uh, if Mark asked me, I like the song, I say yes. Would you like to do a uh, song with Daria? Yes. Would you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Simone, what was your favorite food while being pregnant? <laughs> White Everything. chocolate. There's again one in spam, but I know her. She can. She's not an intellectual. She's <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, food which I love: white chocolate and peppermint ice cream. Chocolate chip, like after eight ice cream. Peppermint ice cream. Yes, it's so good. Never had that. I had Oliver go to to the to the mall to, to buy me yeah, like a package. <laughs> Same with white chocolate. And, but I tried to eat healthy through pregnancy as well. But the first three months, I was on a McDonald's diet. Big Macs and French fries, and I normally don't like French fries. But that was only in the beginning. Like when we were doing the retrospect, I was just kind of eating McDonald's. <laughs> uh, and well, what did you do to get back in shape after giving birth? Uh, breastfeeding and again healthy diet. I love my smoothies, my soups, and uh, but I will never give up chocolate. No. <laughs> I had the best chocolate yeah, yeah. day yesterday just, in New York City. And we're going to have it again tonight. <laughs> yeah, I never saw Simone so uh, excited yeah. about a dessert than yesterday. Yeah. She yeah. was doing the ooh baby thing. <laughs> yeah, I also had so one cocktail. So. And I don't drink much, so that results in the drugs. Yeah. Simone. Yeah. Simone, which uh, song of the new album was the hardest to write or to sing? Uh, I will say first answer right because um, for this record I wrote the lyrics for seven songs, Mark took ten songs, also because of the pregnancy and I was um, not uh, I just you know I was multitasking times ten. It was <laughs> quite a challenge. I was I had my baby in my arms, my laptop on my knees, and I was writing lyrics like this most of the time. And there was one song, it's called Memento. I knew the title, because I, I love also I love the movie, but it was like uh, so difficult to find a topic. I, I love the, the song uh, very much, but yeah, that, that was the last lyric that I actually wrote as well. The most difficult to sing. Uh, there was not really a song where I had difficulties with, so, uh, um, I had my tea with me. With, uh, I actually really love, I have to get that. Please remind me, Lorana, that you have these great teas, throat, uh, throat coat. Mm -hmm. I have to suck up on those. They're, they're really cool. So I have my tea and I have my like little throat candy stuff there. And um, yeah. I actually killed the mic though. I don't know if that was my mistake, but oh, yeah. we had a broken mic, and I mean, it's not possible to sing too loud. So. But yeah, sorry, Sandra. <laughs> Simone, do you keep the presents from the fans? Yes. Not all of them. Unfortunately, I, I do would like to tell this to all the 530 viewers right now. If we do, for example, tours where we have to fly a lot. It's almost impossible for us to take big presents with us. And I would just really love it if you come to see us, give us a letter, keep the money and buy something nice for yourself. I mean, for us it's already great if you just buy the record, come to the shows. And, um, and what I really love is that something is not, oh, that's, something's going wrong. Someone's having, having a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did I want to say? Yeah. But you make pictures of it, right? I link, I make pictures, post it on Instagram, and what I also really love is when people are creative, when people make drawings, paintings, write uh, poems, and uh, yeah. But I would love it if you just spend the money and buy something for yourself and just come to the shows, buy the CDs, keep on supporting us, and uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Buy presents for yourself. But we do appreciate it, you know, especially if you bring chocolate. Or wine. Or wine, yeah. Then we can just really eat it at that moment and you know the suitcase won't overload because we've been carrying stuff that unfortunately broke sometimes. And Mark, he's a little crazy, but you guys probably know that. He he got this Mayan disc once this big. Oh, yeah. And it was at the beginning of the tour and he was he actually was carrying it all the time. 
he was rolling it through all the airports, and it's now in his house. And I, I looked at it recently, and I saw I had to think back that that was hilarious. But um, yeah. And he got all grumpy whenever people would say, "No, you can't take that on the plane. You have yeah. to pay extra or something." He's like, "Oh, just present from the fans. Come on, yeah. you can't do that." And we love getting the flags. We have we hang up all the flags in uh, yeah. in the rehearsal room, and that's easy for us to transport as well. So and and you know I'm anyway always the person with the heavy suitcase. Yeah. Um, and I, I I know the reason for that. Mm -hmm. I, chocolate. Yeah. Okay. What's your political views? Are you liberal? It's a serious question. Oh, is it to me? I asked that to you. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Political views. We have uh, elections coming up in Belgium, so I have to kind of come up with something. But nowadays, I think I could be wrong, but something tells me that it's not like all the different parties are much alike, basically. But it's about who's having the guy who can say it the best, and who like who who is the guy who gets the most votes, like who's the can be either, I would be like, I think more in the center, yeah. not really you know, right or left, but more in the middle, I think. But then it depends on who's like you know, the favorite guy or like who has like the, the good quotes and like makes people laugh with them or something. At least in, in Belgium, I get that idea. The yeah, those guys are the ones who get all the votes. Can you give us tips for learning classical singing? Oh, I, I was uh, really I guess it's, um, uh, singing lessons at first. I guess that's uh, go to a qualified teacher um, that uh, has good uh, recommendations, like you know via somebody. Um, I had the same classical teacher for many years. Uh, back when I still lived in Holland, and um, I switched to uh, uh, another vocal coach whom I worked with for the musical uh, Equilibrio, and I really liked that. So I kept working with her every once in a while, like before the release of a new uh, CD or for retrospect. Uh, yeah, vocal lessons, I would say, um, because it's definitely you need to learn the technique in order to. Sing it. You know, you can try to copy the sound, but you might use the wrong technique and damage your voice. So get get some qualified uh, guidance from teacher. Now a tricky one. Who is your favorite band member and buddy in Epica, Simone? He does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. He's like definitely my big brother. Oh, thank you. Am I your little sister? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. I only have. You're my favorite brothers. brothers. Yeah. So, so you're my only sister. Yeah. Finally got a sister after all those twelve brothers. And now the next question: What do you hate or love about me? No, you're a very happy, positive, funny, social, selfless, <laughs> amazing guitar <laughs> That's enough ass licking for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one for you. Have you found your suitcase, Simone? Yes, it arrived back at five in the morning, but I still had no underpants or anything, so I had to go shopping to <laughs> Dwayne Reed. Dwayne Reed, please sponsor me. I had to go to Forever Twenty One. So I had to buy underpants and uh, other lady stuff. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, it's actually the worst nightmare of a touring musician, a touring, a traveling person. But I. Um, it never happened to me in those twelve years of traveling. It happened once on the way back, but it never happened to me uh, going, starting a travel. You know, if, if it happens to you when you go home, then you can just grab your own toothbrush. You have everything at home. But if you start a travel, it was. Yeah, but luckily Delta Airlines uh, got the suitcase back to me. Thank you very much, Delta. 
Skizak, send me a kiss. Carolina. I'm not supposed to, I guess. No, he's already engaged to Marcella. Yeah. Like, 45 minutes ago, I kind of... Skizak, like, what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Um... I like like the regular European stuff my grandma would cook, uh, like the decent, like a s steak with French fries and or cauliflower with uh, sausage and Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts, awesome. But I can enjoy like that's a good thing. That was another question, like what's a good thing about touring or about being in a band? And I think that's one of them. You, yeah. for instance, now we're in America, so you can. If you want to have a pizza or a burger or uh, stuff like that, and if you go to uh, Asia or something, then you have Chinese food. And, um, Which doesn't shit taste like our Chinese food. Yeah, yeah. you wrote yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I was eating, though. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's great. It's I my birthday. Can you send me congratulations? Happy birthday to Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. No, her name is Belle Petite. I don't think that's your real name, but you're probably very small. Uh, and you're really pretty. Happy what birthday. is your biggest musical dream? <laughs> to do uh, a soundtrack for a big movie. Sing on the soundtrack. Of course, to tour with Epica forever and ever. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, a movie score. That would be really cool. I love movie scores. And Epica I was earlier prescribed as cinematic novel, <laughs> which I think I've never heard before, but that's totally, totally right. So um, one for Isaac, one for Isaac. All the guitars. I play. What do you like most? So I'll probably what what I play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Twins of Metal. What do you play? Are you a fan of Twins of Metal? Do you know what I know? I don't know. But of of all the stuff I played, what I like most and why? Uh, I said it before. I like albums more than songs. So I like the whole flow of the album. And, uh, it's difficult to just pick out one because also if I write for Epica I try to have like one more technical song and a groovy song so I just don't really stick to one thing and I kind of see them all together as one so um, but obviously to record is the most fun is uh, the melodies and the solos that's just good fun because I kind of screw up all the time so I have to uh, Work the fingers and, um, and yeah, try to get it right. And, uh, that's fun. Simone, what do you think about the Lamp Philharmonic of Paraguay? I recently saw that, that video. I showed it to the guys where they make instruments out of um, garbage. Did what? I see Wait, that? Were you in the studio? I showed it to Rob, and Mark, and Orion. I think you were not in the studio with them. I think it's amazing. I think it's really cool. And you know, it's all the idea behind it as well to recycle stuff, you know, everything we throw away. You know, it's, I was really blown away by that. It was very touching. And yeah, I know that a violin costs a whole lot of money, and I like it when people are creative once again, so keep it up. What's your favorite music style to listen to? Hip hop. Yo. Gent. <laughs> no. Metal, of course. Yeah. So and I like thrash metal a lot. If I have to be more specific. What's your worst fan experience or best? The best is when people are uh, excited to see you, and uh, sometimes people become a little bit emotional, <laughs> and I always tell them not to cry. Stay calm, you know? We are human as well, and um, yeah, 
I don't know, the worst experience. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming when a big group of people comes to you and you're just by yourself and everybody's so excited, everybody wants to interact with you and that can be sometimes a little bit uh, scary if it's like a lot of people. So, so is there any ethical lyrics you forgot? Oh, like during a live show? Yes, it happens. I'm human, I'm not a robot, so... Uh, but uh, the trick is to keep on singing, so uh, if I forget the lyrics, I'll just sing uh, the lyrics on repeat. <laughs> A kiss to the Argentine fans, to all the fans, everybody watching. Yeah. Do you plan to execute Living a Lie uh, again? Uh, okay, I'll interpret that as playing it and not killing the song while playing it live. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We play, we play, we never really play it. Maybe we for a time. special show, yeah. like if, if it's. If, if it's an anniversary, anniversary yeah, of the Divine Conspiracy, exactly. then yes, but we will, I don't think we're going to play that a regular song in the in the set. We have, unfortunately, or it's like a luxury problem, we have six records, but we play sets of two hours, so it's, it's quite tricky to pick the right songs to play live. So we, uh, we ask the fans many times also on Facebook, on polls, what are your favorite songs? Sometimes we throw an old song back in again, but it's... We play the classics, Cry for the Moon, Saint Olivier, Unleashed. And now we have another record coming up, so we have to incorporate those songs as well, but we cannot do a six hour set of this. So, um, yeah, but, yeah, like Isaac said, maybe during a special show we might play Living Life again. Yeah. Simone, my cat can marry Minou? <laughs> sure. Wow, what a, what a beautiful day it is. Everyone's getting married. Yeah. We're uniting everybody. <laughs> <laughs> My friend sends you a hug all the way from Argentina. Do you feel it? I feel it. Thank you. I like Argentina. I like your steaks. It's the best meat in the world. Simone, you should make up Isaac one day. Did. I did, I did. I put red lipstick on him once. There's evidence of that. I have a thought, yeah. I don't know if I should yeah. have that. Did I send it, I send it to, to you? Yeah, to yeah. Your, I should have it somewhere. It's he's wearing Russian on. red for Mac. It looks good. <laughs> yeah, he's up for any Are you fun saying stuff. you look good with makeup? Well, thank you. But you look better without. Oh. You're definitely a natural beauty. <laughs> Uh, what was the best experience of the tour for Requiem for the Indifference? To wow. to play with Rob, our new bass player. Oh, yeah. he's, uh, he joined us right after the release, and uh, he uh, he's a great guy. He can cook very well, so that we're very lucky. I can make the smoothies, he makes the pasta, and the Indonesian food, he can do basically everything. That's why we hired him, you know, he's actually our, our good no. <laughs> he's a great, great dude, great live uh, yeah. musician. And he wrote really cool songs yeah. for the album. He also wrote songs. Yeah. He contributed three songs. Yeah. Simone, marry me. I'm already married, sorry. Maybe in another life. Um. Isn't that something for you? What's the best eyeshadow for streak-free results, in your opinion? No, that's actually well, a question I think, for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what I used last. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Use a primer, eyeshadow primer, then everything else. That's what my brother says. He's yeah. a painter. He says use a primer and then paint. Yeah, because, so, because you need a blank canvas, you need something to adhere to, and if you have oily eyelids, you need a primer, and I am sure that only two people are interested in this, so I'll head my question. Isaac, do you like black metal? Yeah, not all of it, but I like uh, I like music with a good production, so like uh, Sons of Northern Darkness from Immortal has a good production, I like that album a lot, and then obviously like Behemoth has cool stuff, Dimmelborg.
Mm. So I guess my, my the, the favorite black metal bands would be the ones with decent production. But sure, I like kind of everything as long as it is done with the right intentions. Yeah. Why does the tennis ball have fur? We can only answer to that question. Um, why does a tennis ball have fur? Do you, Do you know? know the answer? Or does any of you? Physics of it. Probably. Yeah. The way the way it transfers through the air. Mm -hmm. Do you know or? Well, I know that dogs like tennis balls and that it's then nicer to chew because they think they have a bunny in their mouth. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm maybe, gonna look that up. Yeah, can you maybe know. can you please somebody Google that and let us know because we are very much interested in yeah. the we answer. Owe, we question. all would like to know why a tennis ball. Otherwise, I can't sleep at night. Um, do you take your own instruments with you when you do, for example, a show in Vagos, Portugal, and then going to Canada? Yes, we are. Not everything. It's not like we bring the whole drum kit or something like that. But, um, yeah, and like I bring my guitars, and we fly in the same weekend. We do Portugal and then Canada, so we just uh, fly across the world and uh, play the instruments. Yeah. Uh, sing a Nirvana song. Holy wants to cry. I also want it. Here we are now. Entertain us. We're stupid. Entertain us. The news about the new video. Hmm. Maybe you can just tell. Right. Well, we recorded the video in Sweden. Uh, we went to Umeå. A couple of uh, weeks ago, it was with the end of June, January or February. February. So at the end of February, we went to Umio, and uh, we did a green screen uh, video. So they are working on the computer animations as we speak, and uh, hopefully it should be out soon because the song "Unchained Utopia" is already available. Check it out, and the video, the visual, will come ASAP. Okay, so my answer the ball, the, the tennis ball thing? No. <laughs> okay, he's back. What, what do you say? What do I say about the transition between Godly Throne and Epic Cup? Is it hard for you to play more quiet? <laughs> well, the funny thing is that uh, I, when I uh, started the pre production of Design Your Universe, for instance, Martyr of the Free Word. I did that riff, and it's a very difficult riff because Aryan wrote it as a drummer, and um, and he doesn't know if that's even possible, and it turned out to not really be possible. So I had to change it around, but it's still kind of difficult. And um, so yeah, it's kind of a death metal kind of riff. And um, but then whenever Simone is singing on top of something like that, it's it, you would think it sounds more quiet or like uh, mellow or something, but basically you know, a lot of stuff is really challenging with Epica, so don't don't underestimate it, you know. I sometimes sweat my ass off to get it to get it right. And um, also on the new album there's really, really challenging riffs and um, so that that is definitely a step up for us guitar players. So. So the transition was easy, I and mean, as Simone said earlier, it's, uh, you can, I can also play acoustic on the album or clean and whatnot, so there's a lot of variety, and that's good. Yeah. Like Simone, that. what do you expect for the future as a band? I think that good things are going to happen for Africa. We're already on the right track, and uh, I feel that the quantum enigma is going to make a positive change. Isaac, which is your favorite Latin American country? That's a tricky question, of course. There's a Mexican right here. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, for instance, I like the wine in Chile. I like the steaks in Argentina. Um, oh, yes. I so, like you know, every country has kind of a, you know, the culture in Mexico, for instance, uh, with the Mayan culture. So, you know, 
every country kind of has a. It's similar to Europe, Europe, where every country has like uh, specific yeah. things which are lovely, and um, mm -hmm. so it's hard to say which is the most favorite one. But there's definitely certain aspects of a certain country which are really cool, like wine or mm -hmm. meat or whatnot. You know? So, so they all have something. Yeah, and, um, we visited most of them, right? Yeah, yeah, and we we love to. Uh, also explore the, the culture. When we have time for sightseeing, we'll do that. We'll be uh, metal tourists. And we all have our favorite restaurants with, um, in each country, so we always try to go back there and yeah, just enjoy the culture, uh, the scenery, and most of all the concerts. And, uh, and so there, it, we cannot choose one country in Latin America or any place in the world because every Every country is amazing. Every, every country has its its beauty. That's the cool thing about being traveling and seeing the world, experiencing it through your own eyes. Take lots of photos and treasure the memories. Yeah. So we have to uh, kind of yeah wrap it up. We wrap will up. answer two more questions. So come up with an absolute an amazing, uh, unique question, and we'll answer that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to go. We have other things planned for the day, but it's been real fun. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Really so, do we have a really unique question? We are, we are searching. Please hang in there. Someone asks if I have pets, and I, I talked about this uh, earlier today to someone. Um, I don't because. Uh, if I would go on tour, they would die. So it's a very, very easy answer. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, Lucy, you come up first with tennis ball, and now we have uh, something about a giraffe. How would How? you get a giraffe into a refrigerator, Simone? Just ask it politely. That's the correct answer. It reminds me of this, how do you catch a mountain elephant? Am I right, Lucy? I think I'm right. Just ask it politely and it will step into the refrigerator. But or first put it in a sauna. And then I, want to go. I always want to go into a refrigerator after the sauna. Or when the summers are hot, I open the refrigerator or the freezer and I'm like... Really? Yeah. So how do you catch a mountain elephant? Bring the mountain to the elephant. Okay. No, and just make sure it comes down the mountain and then catch it like a normal elephant. That makes sense. It's a good one, huh? So that that's how we'd like <laughs> to end this. Quantum Enigma is coming out real soon, the 2nd of May in Europe, uh, 6th of May in the US and in the UK, I believe. Uh, the 5th, I'm wrong. I the 5th yeah. of May in the UK. We already have one single out, Yes, of Science, the second one, and Chief Utopia is out. Please check it out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and uh, yeah, I'm on the road. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, and thanks for joining <laughs> and for uh, checking in and for all your questions. I hope we we didn't answer all of them, but I hope you impossible, were, uh, unfortunately. We tried. We're happy with uh, whatever we <laughs> came up with. So see you all next time. Enjoy. Bye. Yeah.